Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining me. This is a special service. It is a celebration of life of George Blaisdell, and I want to welcome you to the meeting. Many of you are joining me from around the country, friends of George, from East Coast to West Coast. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to open the meeting with prayer. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of being together at a time of celebration. And we come to do just that today. Bless the memory of our friend George. We give that to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to read to you from George's obituary. George Arthur, Arthur Blaisdell, 87, passed away on Sunday, August 23rd at Cox Sound in Springfield, Missouri. He was known for helping anyone when they needed a hand. He was non-judgmental. He loved God. Fast cars and his dog Wilbur and cat jumps and spending time with his daughter Beth. George loved the Sparta community and was involved with the birth of the Sparta Library. He was active in the Chamber of Commerce and the Lions Club and managing his laundry and storage units. He was born in Cambridge, New York, and was the first child of Theodore and Myra Blaisdell. They moved to York, Maine, and had two more children, Paul and Sandra. George joined the Army and was a paratrooper, among other duties. And after the military service, he moved to Southern California and was active at the YMCA. He bought and managed a campground, enjoyed flying and spending time with his family. He moved back to York, Maine in 1992 to take care of his ailing parents until they passed. He decided to move to Sparta, Missouri in 2005 to be closer to his daughter, who bought the Sparta laundromat with a home next door and built storage units in his backyard. He saw major potential in the Sparta community and wanted to contribute any way he could, and by the way, he did that. He survived by his daughter, Beth Blaisdell, stepson, Ken Blaisdell, and son-in-law, Bruce Brown. He was united with his father, Theodore Blaisdell, mother, Myra Blaisdell, brother, Paul Blaisdell, and sister Sandra Brown, and enjoyed the friendship of many wonderful family and friends. May God bless George. Well, I'm going to read to you from the 91st Psalm, and as we read from the scripture, the word says, He'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You'll tread against the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. Because he loves you, he says, I will deliver you. I will set you on high. He said, he will call upon me. I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him. We can certainly say that about our friend, George. George went to be with the Lord just two weeks ago. He lived a long, full life. The kind of exploits that you read about in books. I spoke with Beth just a few days ago. She could not help but smile as she told me some of the stories of her father's storied life. He was a War II veteran, a paratrooper, a pilot. He loved fast cars and his animals. And as I said earlier in his testimonial, he was always willing to help those who were needy. And he did that here in Sparta. He became a member of our church several years ago. He was faithful to support the work here. And when we needed something, George was always willing and able to help. On more than one occasion, he would come up to me and say, Pastor, here's a little money for the needy. Here's something. Put it where it's needed most. And he was a faithful, faithful servant. God bless George. He was also committed to making our community better. The Chamber of Commerce, of which I served as president, he was so helpful to me in those early days. The Lions Club. He fussed at me for years to join the Lions Club, and I finally did for a time. He was a faithful member and leader in the Lions Club. And then there's the library. It's under construction right now. He was so proud when the library came to town. And when you leave the building here today, and those of you who will hear about it, the library in Sparta is being built right now, and George had a major role in seeing that the library came to Sparta. According to his family, he never met a stranger, 
And I have to say to you today, we are blessed to have had this man among us as a friend, as a member of Hope, and as a colleague. But the very best word that I can say and share with you today is the fact that George was a Christian. He had accepted Christ. He had a firm foundation of faith. He loved Christian music. And I sat with him on a few occasions in the back room of the laundromat, listening to some of his music. He especially liked the music of the Gaithers. And in that same spirit, he loved helping people. And so in the few moments that we have together today, I have chosen a passage of Scripture from the Word of God to honor George today. It's found in the 37th Psalm, and I will read just a few verses to you here today. The Bible says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in the way. The word, the word says the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Commit your way to him. Trust in him and he shall bring it to pass. Rest in the Lord. And those are good words for our friend today. There are helps in David's song that I read to you. Perhaps helps that will touch your heart today. First, the Bible says, trust in the Lord. Those words are repeated twice in verses 3 and verse 5. Trust in God. It sounds simple enough, doesn't it? David penned those words in what could have been difficult times. Trust in God. Trust is faith, by the way, believing in God's promise. And I preached the messages and George heard them here. But let me share them with you this morning. God will never, ever let you down. I believe that. And so did my friend George. There's a wonderful example found in the New Testament. It's found in the heart and mind of Peter, who became the apostle. Peter, the impetuous one. Peter was the guy that was always getting himself in trouble. And there's a fantastic story in Matthew chapter 14. You see, Peter is in the boat, and the storm is coming along, and the disciples, the followers, they're a little worried. Peter calls out. He sees Jesus walking on the water in that story. And it's not a fable, it's a true story. And he says, I think that is the master. So he calls out, Master, if that's you, bid me come to you. Now, the waves are there, and the water is there, and the wind is there. It's a bit of a difficult time. Jesus, if it's you, let me come to you. And Jesus said to Peter, come. Well, there's trust in God there, believing that he would not let him down. So Peter steps out of the boat and begins to walk on the water. How about that? He walked to Jesus during the storm, and they walked together back to the boat. That took a certain level of trust. We can have that trust today. George did. Jeremiah, the Old Testament prophet, the weeping prophet, his words have meaning today that I declare to you. The word says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Well, he knew that, didn't he? We talked at length, George and I, about some of the plans for our area. Plans for the city. Oh, he had some wonderful plans that he shared with many of you here today. Plans for the library. He was so proud when the ground broke for the library to watch the pillars coming up. Plans for our church. We walked the ground and he looked at the acreage we have behind the church here. And it meant something to him. Trust in the Lord and you do. Second, the writer says, commit your ways to the Lord. Today, there's a level of sadness in the room. You've lost dad, death. A faithful friend. We realize that. But you see, George learned the most important lesson that any of us can learn, and that is to commit to God. Today, if we were to ask him what's most important, he would say, to be saved. And he was. On a humorous note, our middle daughter, who is now a missionary, by the way, in Costa Rica, once was asked the question, Are you a Christian? She thought she was giving the right answer. 
are you a Christian? She said at eight years old, no, I'm a Baptist. Well, I think she finally got it right. You can be of a denomination and be a Christian. But George was a faithful member. He was saved. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 says, Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He does, you know. He cares for you. Well, third, from verse 7, the Bible says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. As you do, believe that God will bless all of your days. George lived a long time. He saw many things happen in his 87 years. Some at the beginning. He might have had difficulty believing at the end. What a wonderful life he had. I want to give you a beautiful verse that you can take with you today. It's found in the 37th Psalm. Psalm 37 records these words. It is a beautiful goodbye. The Bible says, I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. What a wonderful truth that is. In the weeks just before George's passing, one Sunday morning, I saw George walking up the hill toward our church. It was a few minutes before church was to start. I walked out of the church and down toward him, and I said, George, what are you doing? He was walking up the hill to the church. And he said to me, I want to come to church. He said, I don't drive anymore, and I just needed to be in church today. He said, do you think I could get a ride home? I said, yes, sir, you, you sure can. You can get a ride home. But I said, George, you need to do something for me. Don't you walk to church anymore, because we're going to come get you for the next four weeks. Either myself or one of the men that's here today went and picked him up. I said, George, you be ready at 9.15. I'll have somebody there. And before I could get into the driveway, George would come out the door, a big smile, and come get in the car. And he came to church. No walking to church, George. He was faithful for those next four weeks. His last Sunday, he didn't make it to church. Perhaps he was looking down from heaven. He loved being in this house. I want to leave one verse of scripture with you as we make ready to pray and to say goodbye. It's found in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. The Bible says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run the race with patience. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. George did that two weeks ago on late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. He said goodbye to this world and was welcomed into the hands of Almighty God. Somehow I feel that George, with those heroes of Hebrews chapter 12, is looking down on you and me. He may be saying, what's all the fuss about today? Let's run the race, friends, with patience, fixing our eyes on Jesus. God bless George Arthur Blaisdell. And God bless all of you today. That is my prayer. Lord, bless the memories of our dear friend. Bless the family as they acknowledge loss today. Keep your hand on them. Touch them. Bring comfort. The peace of God which passes all understanding. We give them to you now. And the memories of our dear friend. As the angels who have given charge over him have escorted him to the heavens. And we ask your favor now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face look on you and give you his perfect peace. That is my prayer for you today. And remember, if God is for us, we can be against us.